Welcome, this is Ann Windsor. I'm glad that you joined me for this reading that I've been doing of the little book on The Blood Covenant by E.W. Kenyon. I'd like to begin today by reading again from the foreword that was written by Brother Kenyon's daughter, Ruth. She says, this subject of the blood covenant opens an absolutely new field for research and study for those who are deeply interested in obtaining the best and richest of God's provisions for man. The truth hidden away, the memorial of the Lord's table, and forming the foundation of it is of such a nature that your heart will thrill in response to the possibilities that present themselves and will stir you to lay hold on the same power and victory and miracles that became a part of the everyday life of the, the apostles. It is impossible to describe in words what the blood covenant will mean to you once you learn what it is. Chapter 4 Jehovah Cuts the Covenant with Abraham When God entered into the covenant with Abraham, there were several very striking events that took place. Among them was the changing of Abram's and Sarai's names to Abraham, a prince of God, and Sarah, princess of God. In other words, God lifted them into the royal family before he cut the covenant with them. The Abrahamic covenant, which is the basis of of Judaism and Christianity is the most marvelous document in existence. It was sealed by circumcision, Genesis 17. This covenant bound Abraham and his descendants by indissolvable ties to Jehovah, and it bound Jehovah to Abraham and his descendants by the same Solemn token. The cutting of the covenant. When Abraham was 99 years of age, God appeared to him as, quote, God Almighty or El Shaddai. He said unto Abraham, Walk before me and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. We see Abraham on his face. God is talking with him. God tells him, quote, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be the father of a multitude of nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For the father of a multitude of nations have I made thee. In Genesis 15, 6, God made a promise to Abraham. And it says that Abraham believed God. And it was reckoned to him for righteousness. This word believe means that Abraham made an un qualified committal of himself and all he was or ever would be to God. Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him for righteousness. This word believe means that Abraham made an unqualified committal of himself and all he was or ever would be to God. The word believe 
here in the Hebrew means not only a loving trust, but it also means give yourself wholly up. W-H-O-L-L-Y The word believe here in the Hebrew means not only a loving trust, but it also means give yourself wholly up or to be a part of himself. Capital H Abraham believed God, made an unqualified committal of himself to God. He gave himself wholly up. He became a part of God himself. Or it also means to go right into him. Or the unqualified committal. Abraham gave himself to God in utter abandonment of self. On the ground of that, or basis of that, God said, Take for me an animal and slay it. That is, as God's substitute. Abraham did it. Then God said, My substitute has been slain. And I want you to circumcise yourself so that his blood would mingle with the blood of God's substitute. Hmm. When that was done, God and Abraham had entered the covenant. It meant that all Abraham had or ever would have was laid on the altar. It meant that God must sustain and protect Abraham to the very limit. When God cut the covenant with Abraham, the Israelitish nation came into being as a covenant people because of this covenant. The covenant was limited to Israel, the children of Abraham, and had behind it the promise and the oath of God. Genesis 22, 16-18 some covenant facts. The seal of the covenant was circumcision. Every male child at eight days of age was circumcised. And the circumcision was the entrance into the Abrahamic covenant. When that child was circumcised, entered into the covenant, then that child became an inheritor of everything connected with the covenant. If the child's father and mother should die, another Israelite is under obligation to care for the child. Or if the husband should die to care for the widow. It is the law of the covenant. All things are laid upon the altar of this covenant. If keeping the covenant with a blood brother meant the death or loss of wife or a firstborn or the destruction of his property or of his very own life. All, everything was laid upon the altar. The Covenant Obligations Genesis 17.3 Jehovah says, And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Every male child at eight days of age was circumcised. The mark on their bodies was the seal of their place in the covenant. And as long as Israel kept this covenant that was renewed in Moses, there weren't enemies enough in the whole world to conquer one little village. When God led Israel out of Egypt by Moses, they had no law and no priesthood. Then God gave them the Ten Commandments, the priesthood, the atonement, the sacrifices, the offerings, and the laws that govern the sacrifices and the offerings. He gave them the scapegoat and the worship. All these belonged to the covenant. The covenant did not belong to the Ten Commandments. As modernists put it, 
but the covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, was the reason for the law. The law is called the law of the covenant. Israel were the people of the covenant. Read Exodus and Leviticus carefully, noting when the word atonement first occurs, when the law was given, when the priesthood was set apart. Study Leviticus 16 and 17 carefully. Note what the blood meant and the significance of the word atonement. Chapter 5, Abraham's Sacrifice Take now thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest. You know the rest of that fearful command that came to the man Abraham as he stood transfixed in the presence of the angel of the covenant. <laughs> but there was no wavering on the part of Abraham. Consider what this meant to him. We know how he had hungered for a son. We know how he expressed his longings to Jehovah in those years when it seemed that such a possibility was gone forever. Then Jehovah had promised him a son. Genesis 17, 15 to 17. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and moreover I will give thee a son of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant for his seed after him. Genesis 17, 19. Abraham and Sarah were old. Abraham was nearly a hundred years old and Sarah was 90. In the realm of the senses, for them to become parents of a child was impossible. For the scripture tells us in Genesis 18:11, now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. But Abraham considered not his own body, which was as good as dead, Neither did he consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. But looking unto God, he waxed strong. He counted that God was able to make good anything that he promised. The scripture tells us, Abraham believed God. Genesis 21, 1-3 and Jehovah visited Sarah, as he had said. And Jehovah did unto Sarah, as he had spoken. And Sarah conceived, and bare Abraham a son in his old age. And Abraham called the name of his son Isaac, which means laughter. The child grew to be 18 or 20 years of age. Then God asked, for the boy. He said, Take now thy son, thine only son, even Isaac, whom thou lovest, unto a mountain which I will show thee, and offer him there as a burnt offering. Genesis 22, 2. Abraham did not hesitate, though it meant giving up all he held dear. But he took the young man on that three days and three nights journey. They arrived at Mount Moriah and together they built the altar. Abraham laid the young man on the altar and drew the knife to slay him. 
when the angel of the Lord shouted to him, saying, Abraham, Abraham, stay thy hand. Oh, God had found a man that would keep the covenant. He had found a covenant-keeping man. Oh, now hear what God said. By myself have I sworn, saith Jehovah, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, oh, in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. Genesis 22, 16 and 17. Did you notice? He said, By myself have I sworn. God's throne became the surety of his promise. Oh, it is the most solemn thing that a man can conceive. God's throne became the surety of his promise. By myself I have sworn. It is the most solemn thing that a man can conceive. Abraham had proved his worthiness of God's confidence. The covenant-keeping God. You remember that before this thing happened, when God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he said it wasn't best to do it without talking it over with Abraham. You remember Abraham's great appeal and how he talked with God in a manner that would stagger one. He said, Will not the God of all earth do right? Oh, then he began to plead for the righteous ones in those cities. And God permitted that man, on the ground of his blood covenant relationship, to become the intercessor for the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. When Abraham entered into the covenant, he gained the right to arbitrate between the wicked men of the earth and the God of the whole earth. When Abraham entered into the covenant, he gained the right to arbitrate between the wicked men of the earth and the God of the whole earth. Abraham established a blood covenant precedent of intercession that has stood through all the ages. Abraham established a blood covenant precedent of intercession that has stood through all the ages. Chapter 6, The Abrahamic Covenant The Abrahamic Covenant was the reason for Israel's being. The Abrahamic Covenant was the reason for Israel's being. There would have been no nation had God not given them the covenant. You remember that Isaac was born after Abraham was 100 years old and Sarah was past 90 years old. Isaac, father of the Israelite nation, was a miracle child. Isaac, father of the Israelite nation, was a miracle child. That nation went down into Egypt after Isaac's grandchildren had grown to manhood. And they were delivered out of Egypt 400 years later, after having served in bondage for over 300 years. No nation has ever been delivered like that. No nation has ever been delivered like that. It was the rarest, most unique national experience in history. They were delivered because they were God's blood covenant people. In Exodus 2, when God heard the groanings of Israel in Egypt, he said that he remembered his covenant that he had made 
with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> In Exodus 2, when God heard the groanings of Israel in Egypt. He said that he remembered his covenant that he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God sent Moses down into Egypt to deliver Abraham's blood covenant descendants. God sent Moses down into Egypt to deliver Abraham's blood covenant descendants. God couldn't break the covenant. He could not forget it nor ignore it. He is the covenant keeping God. Back behind Israel was this solemn covenant that God had sealed on his side by putting himself in utter absolute bondage to that covenant. Whew. Back behind Israel or backing Israel was this solemn covenant that God had sealed on his side, capital H, his side, putting himself in utter absolute bondage to that covenant. God and Israel were bound together. As long as Israel kept the covenant, there were no sick people among the Israelites. When he said, I am Jehovah that healeth thee, that settled it. Jehovah was their only physician. He was not only their physician, but he was their succor, comforter, he was their protector. There was never a barren wife, no babies ever died. No young men and women ever died unless they broke the covenant. As long as they kept the covenant, there were not allied armies enough in the world to conquer one little village. In battle, no soldiers were slain. They were blood covenant men. Moses led them out of Egypt into the barren desert comparable to our own Mojave Desert. And on the ground of the covenant or the basis of the covenant, God supplied them with water for themselves and their cattle and manna for the people. When they came out of Egypt, it was through signs and wonders that staggered the whole world at the time and have been the wonder and amazement of the world ever since. God preserved them as a nation because they were his covenant people. When they sinned and broke the covenant, they were carried away into captivity into Babylon. They had sinned against the covenant. They had brought judgment upon themselves. But in the face of that, God remembered the covenant he had made with Abraham years before. They were given a revelation of God. We call it the Old Covenant. We call it the Law of the Prophets and the Psalms. Israel was given this revelation of God and this Law of God because they were God's blood covenant people. Then later, God gave them Jesus because they were the blood covenant people. Jesus became the founder of the new covenant. We have that new covenant because they had the Abrahamic covenant. We enter into the strange blessings that they entered into and richer because of the new covenant of which Jesus is the surety. Hallelujah. Well, next time we'll begin with chapter 7, Israel, the blood covenant people. Before I close, however, I want to read a little psalm that Brother Kenyon has here at the very back of the book. It's entitled, The Blood 
covenant, and I'll be adding it to the end of each reading in the upcoming chapters. The blood covenant. Oh, this is for you, and it's for me, and that's why I want to share it. I have a right to grace in the hardest place, on the ground of the blood covenant. I have a right to peace that can never cease, on the ground of the blood covenant. I have a right to joy that can never cloy, on the ground of the blood covenant. I have a right to power, yes, this very hour, on the ground of the blood covenant. I have a right to health through my father's wealth on the ground of the blood covenant. I my healing take, Satan's hold must break on the ground of the blood covenant. I have a legal right now to win this fight on the ground of the blood covenant. And I will take my part with courageous heart on the ground of the blood covenant. Now my rights I claim in his mighty name on the ground of the blood covenant. And my prayers prevail though all hell assail on the ground of the blood covenant. On the ground of the blood on the ground of the blood covenant, I will claim my rights, though the enemy fights on the ground of the blood covenant. Oh, Father, I thank you. Oh, thank you for Abraham. Thank you for the covenant that you cut with him. Thank you that we are the seed of Abraham that we have been engrafted in. Oh, through Christ. We are the seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise that you made to him. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful truth. Father, that it goes back beyond Moses and the law goes back. It's before Moses and the law. Oh, Father, the simplicity of the bread and the wine that Melchizedek brought. Oh, forerunners, Lord Jesus, of your blessed supper that you gave us. This is my, the cup given of my blood shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. This is my body broken for you. Oh, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I pray that this revelation, this of the blood covenant that came, descended down from Abraham, Father, the reality that we're living as a product of it today will cause those that hear this little book read will cause them to go back and investigate these things, Lord. And as Ruth Kenyon said here in the beginning, oh, it will open new fields for research and study. Oh, hallelujah. That the truth hidden away will thrill their hearts in response to the possibilities that present themselves. As this truth rises up before the eyes of our heart and our mind and our emotions and our will and our bodies. Once again, hallelujah. Father, I thank you we've been grafted in. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. I send this seed forth, Father. Watch over your word to perform it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Watch for the next portion of this wonderful story.